an Independence Bowl, at least a name that most of us have heard of here. And the game is actually going to be pretty good. UAB versus BYU. If we take a look at this game, Chris, and set the table here. UAB coming in 8-4. and four. How about BYU going for an 11-win season? Now, the one matchup that is going to be most interesting for me here is the rush defense of UAB, giving up only three yards per rushing attempt on the season, going up against Tyler Algier. And he has 1,404 yards rushing and 20 touchdowns here. You see the line in this game, BYU favored by a touchdown. Should they roll? Probably, but these are one of those games where a motivation factor where you're saying like, hey, we can play up against a team against BYU and BYU goes, who are we playing? Miami, Florida State, LSU? No, you're going to get UAB. UAB, where is that at? So maybe you get some of that foundation here in this game, Chris. What's an early look from you between UAB and BYU? So this is a game I really struggle with because if you followed me at all, I will tell you that I worship at the feet of Bill Clark. He is the head coach at UAB. I think he's one of the best football coaches in the country that nobody knows his name. Look up the stories of what happened to UAB, what their program uh -huh. went through, thanks to the politics of University of Alabama, and, uh, and, and what he has done there. Unbelievable. And he's a defensive guy, and he's got a lot of pride in that defense, and that's great. But that defense was being done in the Conference USA, and 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 that is that is not anything very impressive. Now the numbers are great; they are what they are. You win against the opponents you went up against, but you weren't going up against anybody who could run the football like BYU. If BYU's give a damn is there, BYU should roll here. I love what. Kalani Sataki has done in, in his building there. I thought he had a really good shot at getting that Oregon job. BYU locked him up. That was the best thing they've done in a long time. Um, I, I think they're physical. They're so much older and mature. We talk about this all the time in college football. BYU freshmen through seniors are 24 mm -hmm. to 28 yes. years old. These and guys have married. wives and kids at home. They got that dad strength. They have four wives and 13 kids, don't they? And you know, oh, I'm not getting into that. But, isn't that how that but works? They, I don't know. They're just, but they are big and they are strong and they are athletic and they push people around. And most of those people aren't expecting that. You're, it's all going to come down to give a damn. If they give a damn, I'd lay the points. Yeah. Grown men, Kyle, here as we take a look. Last five games, five straight wins for BYU. That included Washington State, Virginia, Idaho State, Georgia Southern, and at USC. Definitely a more pedigree program here over oh, yeah. UAB. Just a matter of looking down, possibly, Kyle. Your looks here between UAB and BYU, possibly. I'll make this short and sweet. BYU is going to kick the living hell out of them. I mean, you look when uh, UAB plays actually teams with some pedigree. Okay, they beat UTEP. We just talked about UTEP's struggles. You lose to, you know, University of Texas, San Antonio. Here they are just out here just running these streets. They lose Road to runners. Rice. They lose to Rice. Then you look over at BYU. They're beating teams in Power 5 conferences. They can run the ball. They're going to be bigger, more physical, more mature. So mentally, they'll be ready for this bowl game. I think BYU kicks the living hell out of them. I'll take BYU and lay the points. Yeah, take a look at the scoring, too, of the last four games here. First, Virginia hung a 66 spot, Idaho State 59, uh, yeah. Georgia Southern 34, and USC 35. So maybe some points in this game. I'll look more toward the over in this one, 54 and a half buoyed by BYU getting it done. And that's it.